This part 138 phase p.net tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss adding images to slideshow using a database table. Please watch part 137 before proceeding. In part 137, we discussed loading image data from an XML file. So this is the XML file that we used in part 137 to store image data. Notice that we are storing the name of the image and the order in which we want that image to be displayed within the slideshow. So now we want to store this image data in a database table. So the first step is to obviously create a table to store the name and the order. So here we are creating this table TBL images and has got three columns, ID which is going to be the primary key of the table and then name and order columns. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this table. And then this ins insert script right here is going to insert data into TBL images table. So the name of the image and the order in which we want that image to be displayed in the slideshow. So let's go ahead and execute this insert script. I'll have this SQL script available on my blog in case you need it. And the next step is to basically create a stored procedure to retrieve this image data from the table TBL images. So let's go ahead and create a procedure. So create procedure SP and let's call this get image data as we need you know the name and order columns so select name and order now here order is a SQL Server reserved keyword but we want to use it as a column name so we have to wrap it inside square brackets from TBL images okay so this is going to be our stored procedure let's execute that the stored procedure is created now let's execute the stored procedure itself and we get the data okay so we have the image data stored in the database table so we can safely delete this image data.xml so let's get rid of that xml file we can get rid of the folder altogether as well because we don't have any of the files there so i'm going to delete that away okay the next step is to actually load that image data from the table so obviously we have to write bit of video.net code so if we have to communicate with the sql server we need a connection string so let's go ahead and add connection string to our web.config file and the connection string obviously we need to specify the name of the server um, you know what type of security you want to use whether you want to use windows authentication or a SQL Server username and password. Here I am using Windows Authentication and the database name is Sample. Okay, the name of the connection string is TBCS. Okay, so let's add this connection string to our web.config file. And to speed things up, I have this connection string already typed. So let me copy that and add it to our web.config file. So within the connection string section, I'm going to paste it there. All right. So the next step is to write the ADO.NET code. And uh, let's go ahead and import the required ADO.NET namespaces. We already have system.data. We need system.data.sql client and then system.configuration. OK. And all we need to do here is change this set image URL function. Now, if you look at the set image URL function at the moment, we are reading the image data from the XML file. At the moment, we don't have an XML file there. Instead, we want to read image data from the database table. So let's go ahead and write ADO.NET code. Let's get rid of that line there. And then, first of all, let's create a SQL connection object. To create a SQL connection object, we need a connection string. So let's read the connection string information from web.config file. So we can use configuration manager class. So configuration manager dot connection strings of what is the name of our connection string? It's dbcs. So let's copy that. So get the connection string value into this variable. And then we are going to pass this to the constructor of the SQL connection class. So using this connection string, create a SQL connection object. And the next step is to create our SQL data adapter object. And then there is um, a constructor uh, which takes you know, the command text, the select command text, and the connection object. So our select command is actually a stored procedure. So let's go ahead and pass the name of the stored procedure. So we are going to use this overloaded version, which takes the select command text and the SQL connection object. So let's pass the name of the stored procedure and 
we already have the connection object okay so we have um, the data adapter right now but then the other important thing that we have to tell to the SQL data adapter object is that this is not you know an inline SQL statement instead it is a stored procedure so we have to tell that to the data adapter object and to do that you know it's a select command so data adapter dot select command dot command type okay so what's the command type it's a stored procedure and then da dot fill data set object so this method is going to open the connection execute the stored procedure retrieve the data and fill this data set with the data okay so by this point we have data within the data set and notice the name of the table here it's tbl images but then in the code here we are referring to the table as image so let's give the table name here so when we are filling this data set with that data from tbl images table within the data set i want to refer that table as image table okay all right with all these changes let's go ahead and run this look at look at this at the moment this application is running using the xml file it has stopped because we don't have the xml file so let's actually run this now now it has to load the image data from the database table you know look at that it's loading the data from the database table six seven eight nine we have total nine images there okay now if you want to add a tenth image to the slideshow all you have to do is copy that image into the images folder and then add a row to the database table so at the moment if you look at this table there are nine rows at the moment so if I want to add a tenth image the order should be 10 and then specify the name of the image there and obviously you need to have that image within this images folder all right on this slide you can find resources for asp.net c sharp and sql server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day